Hey, what's up Blender users? I'm Jonathan. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how to create a realistic condensation effect on any given model. And by the way, if you enjoy my content, consider subscribing because I upload a new video every Saturday. And with that said and done, let's get straight into the video. Okay, for this tutorial, I created this little can model. It's not very detailed or high poly, but it will suit our purposes. I also gave it two materials, one for the metal top and one for the texture which will be this Coca-Cola texture. So if I go into the material preview, we can see that it's textured like this. But how do we now add the condensation onto our model? We will use a trick for this I really haven't seen anywhere else, because we're going to use dynamic paint. But first, we have to create the water droplets. For this, we can just add a cube, and we can already move it to a second collection, for example one named droplets. So just press OK and move it to the side. We can now give it a subdivision level of 3, so add in the subdivision surface modifier, give it 3 levels and hit apply. We now want to go into top view by pressing 7 on the numpad, going into edit mode, press 1, so we can select this vertex right here, we can also go into the wireframe mode and press O for proportional editing. Now we can press G and X and move this vertex till it hits the y-axis. We also want to scroll like this till we get a model that looks like this. We now have the water tension effect on the sides of the droplet. Of course we also want to grab one of the top vertices G and Z and move it upwards so we get a bit more of a droplet like shape. We now want to duplicate this model, move it to the side and give it some variation. For example move the vertices a bit and scale it down, just like this. In the end you would want to have around five different droplets, but for this tutorial I'm only going to use two. So select both and we can already shade them smooth and then also go into the material panel, hit new, select glass, give it a roughness of zero and an IOR of 1.333 and then you want to hit Ctrl and L and click on materials. So now both of them share the same water material, just like this. The next thing would be to scatter them around our can. So for this, just add in a particle system. Select hair in advanced. Of course, we don't want to have particles all around our model. So I'm just going to go into edit mode and select these faces right here and add them to a vertex group, just like this. And now in the particle system, we can select this group under density so we only have particles on the side. You can also notice that we have way too less faces for our hair strands. So we can go into edit mode again and add in some loop cuts right here. This will also come in handy later on when we will use dynamic paint. So just add them, right click and now we can see that we get a good amount of particles. We can also under emission select random as our distribution just for further realism. Now under render select collection and select our droplets collection just like this and we can also choose object rotation of course these droplets are way too big so we can just scale them down also the rotation is off so I'm gonna check rotation choose normal and we can see that now they are all rotated correctly but I want to give it a bit of a face and randomize the face so we get some random rotation great of course, they right now look very uniform because the scale isn't random, so we can just turn this almost up to 1, just like this, so we get some random scale in our droplets. We can now go into rendered mode and see that we have correctly scattered our droplets around our model, but they don't really look that integrated. So we can fix this by adding dynamic paint. To do this, we first want to convert these droplets into a mesh. So press convert in the particle system and we can move them all into a new collection. Just like this. Now we can also disable the droplets collection and on the cylinder disable the particle system. The next thing would be to select every droplet, shift select one and press ctrl J so we get one mesh. We can also go under object, set origin and set the origin to the geometry just to keep our scene a bit cleaner. Now we want to add dynamic paint to both the can and the droplets. For the droplets I want to select brush and add the brush. 
for the can I wanted to be a canvas. To actually see something happening we want to go to output and press this little plus icon for the wet map layer. We can now go into the texture material right here where I have the coca-cola texture mapped and under input select wet map. We can preview the factor by just control shift clicking on the node if you have the node wrangler add-on enabled. If we now go into the material preview you can see that we start to see something. But this doesn't really look that great. We can however add a subdivision surface modifier and move it above the dynamic paint. I'm just going to set it to a level of 4 just like this and you can see that now we don't really see anything except some few dots around our droplets. This is because there aren't really any physics that change how the wet map would look. So we can just for example enable drip. If I now play the animation you can see that it looks like the wet map is dripping down from our particles. This is kind of what we want but we of course want it to drip upwards. We can really easily do this by just giving the gravity a value of negative one. Now if we play the animation we can see that it drips upwards. You can also see that the wet map only is around a few particles. A really easy fix is to not use mesh volume as our paint source, but mesh volume plus proximity. If we go to frame 1, you can now see that the whole mesh is almost white. This is because the distance is right now way too high. If we set it to 0 0.0 and 1, we can see that the web map is now around every droplet. And if we play our animation, we can see that we get the result we wanted. Now you can just select your canvas and hit bake. I right now just baked a few frames, but this is actually looking pretty good. Now we want to integrate this into our actual material. So Ctrl Shift click on the principal PSTF node again, and we can now just plug the factor of the wet map into our roughness input. You can now see that we get the exact opposite effect that we wanted, so we can just use an invert node to invert this. Great. And after the invert node, we can add a color ramp node to control how wet we want it to be. And you can see that this really integrates our droplets nicely into our scene. And yeah, that's basically it. This is how you can create really realistic condensation on any given model. I hope this tutorial was helpful and I hope you learned something. And if you did, consider liking and subscribing. And we are going to see us in the next video next Saturday.